So I wanted to uh, re read to you the first stanza from my book, Trust and Awakening. The great way is effortless with no preferences. Surrender, desire, and aversion. Clarity dazzles. So the, the great way is effortless. There's only effort if there's someone to effort. So right in this line, what I'm pointing to is that there isn't a someone. That's not actually what's happening. We think that we're doing things. I'm, I'm picking up this pen. I think that that's what's happening. But what's happening is just pen is picked up. So a little different in terms of how it's being done, who's doing it. The next line with no preferences. One of the ways that we maintain a sense of self is through our self-talk and through our likes and dislikes. We are constantly asserting little inner judgments of, I like the weather today, I don't like this temperature, I like these shoes, I don't like those trousers. Uh, and on and on. We're evaluating all the time. And this reaffirms to us uh, who we are. Okay, I'm that person that doesn't like this color but likes that color. Okay, I see who I am. So putting down preferences, relaxing preferences, even temporarily, also opens us up to what's happening, what's moving, that's not based on a personality driver, what's the absolute functioning. The third line, surrender, desire, and aversion. These are two of the ways that we hook into the sense of self. In Buddhism, it's believed there are three defilements, three sort of major uh, problems with the personality, desire, aversion, and delusion. So what I've seen working with students now for almost 20 years is that most people have one of the defilements that's sort of their core. And we all have all three, but uh, people will be either desire types, what we call greed types. So wanting, if I can get stuff, I get the right stuff and good stuff near me, then life's gonna be great. Uh, the flip side is the aversive type. I've gotta get the bad stuff away from me. If I can constantly just keep bad stuff away, the good stuff will stay within my inner circle. So they're still seeking the pleasure, the same as the desire type, but they're actively doing it by the function of aversion. And then finally, the, the delusion type. Again, we're all, we all have all three. The primary delusion is the belief in the sense of self. That is our primary conviction, which then it then influences our entire outlook. That's the, the lens we look through is, I'm a real me, this is the world I'm in, and I need to manipulate this world in order to get stuff that I need. And I'm not saying manipulate in a kind of controlling way or a, uh, a way that's dominating others, but just I need to take action that results in my getting benefits, my getting income, my getting food and shelter, all these different things. And so you can see how if we can start relaxing that and letting things just be, we can realize that like the good luck, bad luck story, we don't actually know whether something is good or bad until time unfolds. So this is keeping us in the not knowing, which is where that in that important beginner's mind where all possibilities are available. And finally, the last line of this first stanza, clarity dazzles. And this is really pointing to when we have a view from the absolute on, on the world or a view of the world, we really start to see qualities of the absolute uh, manifesting in ordinary reality. We can see by looking, I can look out my window and I see trees and light and shade. And there's a way that with the light and shade, I can feel a resonance of the presence of the absolute. The absolute is manifesting, the love is manifesting, and so is the absence, so is the emptiness the is manifesting as well. So that's the clarity dazzles, is 
we begin to see reality as it sees itself. And that's why these practices are so helpful for that. Let me just check in and see if there's any, any questions.